tell me the story of Jesus right on my heart every word tell me the story of prayer
story of Jesus. The greatest story ever told. The story that everyone needs to hear. In every nation, every age, every tribe, every people. Hallelujah. And with that song, we welcome you today, David and Lindsay Griffiths, to this week's service from the Pentecostal Holiness Church here in Whithorn. Remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we welcome you to this cradle of Christianity in Scotland, Whithorn, where this program is coming from. And that you will join us, first of all, in this first part of the program, in a time of prayer and intercession before the very throne room of God. And then the preaching of the word. Glory to God and praise and worship. And we remember now, first of all, as we start this time of prayer and intercession, the word of the Lord from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. And this is the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Verse 46 to 49. Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Oh, Father God, today we approach the very throne room of, of thine. In the name of Jesus Christ, thy only begotten Son. And we worship you today and we welcome you today to have total preeminence in this service. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the three in one, the Trinity, the co-equal, co-existent Godhead. And Father God, it is not by accident today that this is a meeting and a service from the Pentecostal Holiness Church. For thou hast decreed there in those very words in Luke, through thy son in Luke chapter 24. Tarry ye in Jerusalem till ye be endued with power from on high. And we thank thee today in the name of Jesus, Father, that thou indeed brought about the day of Pentecost, the very first Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost fell upon all men who were assembled together of one accord in the upper room. And we thank thee today again, Father God, for that same Holy Spirit. For thy word says, I am the Lord, I change not. Neither Father, nor Son, nor Holy Spirit change it. And we do tarry, Lord, indeed. And in the old days of Pentecostalism, there used to be tarrying meetings when people waited on the Holy Spirit, on the Holy Ghost. And afterwards, in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, thou saidst, thou shalt be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And thou art the same, Father God, and thy Son and Holy Ghost yesterday, today, and forever. And we believe and are sure that same Holy Ghost empowers for ministry today. And as for the holiness, the Pentecost, the holiness church, the holiness is to be holy as thou art holy. Oh, Father God, there is no shadow of turning with thee. 
No. Thou wilt desire. We know what thou wilt desire. In the words of Psalm 51. And this is our prayer today, Father God, this word from Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive thee. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And from verse 17, the sacrifices of God and a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Thank thee, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That first thou sentest a second Elias or Elijah, John the Baptist, who preached repentance and to prepare the way of the Lord for his first coming. And we thank you, for thy dear beloved son, Jesus Christ, who also said that repentance and remission of sins must be preached. And we believe, Father God, in the name of Jesus, there is another Elias or Elijah coming, who's here already, in fact. And thy only begotten son, Jesus Christ, preached this. He said, Elias has already come, Elijah, meaning the Elijah who faced up to Jezebel, and who won a great victory in the Lord through the power of God. The second Elijah being John the Baptist. And the third and last Elijah to be thine end time remnant church. Father God to repeat, to preach again repentance and remission of sins. And we ask right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, our wilt indeed create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Father God, we recognize this to be a brokenness revival in these end times. Also according to Psalm 51, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Thou wilt not despise. And forgive us for the hardness of our hearts, Lord God even within the church. And also, Lord, that so many injustices and evil is being committed even at this very time. Father God, we come against that spirit, that evil spirit of death and hell that evil spirit of Jezebel and of Antichrist, in particular Antichrist, doubt and unbelief, that is blinding the people, Lord God, that is making many believers 
weaker and doubting. Thou hast said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I said, the Lord, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And the trumpet must not have an uncertain sound. It must be the trumpet of I, the Lord. Trumpet of the Lord shall sound in these last days. Lift up thy voices now, said the Lord. Lift up thy voices in unity of purpose. Declare my name among the nations. Declare my righteousness to the nations. For sin doth abound in these last days, said the Lord. But there is nothing hidden from me, said the Lord. I am an all-knowing, all-seeing God, omnipotent and omnipresent and omniscient. And I am the Lord that healeth thee. This is the Lord's word today to us. Therefore, worship me in spirit and in truth. Learn of me. Learn of me. Learn of my names. Learn of my word. Learn of my will for these last days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We open our hearts to Thee today, Lord, totally, totally. We open, we open our hearts to Thee. We need to do Thy will and Thine alone in these last days, Father God. And in the words of Reese Howells of the Bible College of Wales, Thy beloved intercessor, Help us to be willing, to be willing, to fulfill thy will, both individually given to us as individual believers and corporately, as a fellowship or as a church, as a ministry, as a worldwide true remnant church. Give us thy words today, Lord. wonderful words of life to be pulsating through us, that we be living epistles, living stones, made more and more into thy likeness, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. And we're talking of the Holy Spirit today, the Holy Ghost. And there's a most wonderful song now for us to sing. So I'll sing to you now, there is a river. He said, the Spirit 
thirst again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lindsay, this is David Griffiths. I'm coming over from the control area of our studio. We are living in the last of the last days. Amen. My wife, Lindsay, we, we have never, I think, felt so close to the rapture as we do now. Mm. God's been instilling on our hearts to bring out the message of walking in the Spirit. Yesterday, I 
convened over our Anglican service, which I've got a very old book of common prayer full of scripture and clearly anointed how the compilers, and I say compilers, because there's nothing of their own selves, it's all pure scripture. Mm. Bring together each week a reading from an epistle and a reading from the gospel. And this week's theme was walking in the spirit and this I want to continue in our Pentecostal service. For if anybody needs to understand walking in the spirit, it's Pentecostals. Yet, one's got to understand there is a counterfeit. Mm. And this we will be talking about today. Thank you, Lindsay. She'll be back with our hymn sing a little later on. The Lord spoke to me and said to speak on Romans 8, a passage of scripture I've spoken many times. And it is so important to grasp the whole idea for this passage of Scripture has departments in it. Department number one, no condemnation to those who walk not after the flesh. Department number two, being dead not being ourselves, not having human thought. Department three, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. There are many people who call themselves Christian but have never grown up. Then comes the final passage. And I summarize, of course, for there's so much in this passage to grasp that we have to take it in strategical steps. Step one, the no condemnation, what it means. Step two, being dead. Step three, being led by the Spirit, realizing then we are one of the sons of God. And then the whole final passage, what it means to be an intercessor, the determination, the understanding of supernatural faith so great, I begin with part one naturally. And Paul is dealing with an inner conflict. We are all tripartite beings. Body, soul and spirit. I was brought up in a holiness mission hall that talked constantly of this conflict. I remember the heavy nights of conviction when professing Christians used to come up and admit backsliding. They came and they wept that they had walked not after the spirit, but after the flesh. And that God had been dealing with them And that they were coming up so as to be totally sanctified. What was called in the 1950s the second blessing. What John Wesley referred to as entire sanctification. Call it what you will. It was a movement of the spirit to die to the flesh. And it's interesting to note, as we look through this letter to the Romans, the conflict Paul himself admits to. 
moving from the wretched man that he was to being the one moving not after the flesh but after the spirit, being buried by baptism into the death of the Lord Jesus Christ that he may be raised up in newness of life. And all this is a prelude to this Romans 8 passage that is so significant at this time as we are walking through the shadows of the tribulation. One can see what is going to happen next month. We can't go into full detail, for if I did, we would again be censored. But this I can say, and I repeat the words of Jordan Peterson, saying that the crash which is about to come financial crash will impact a particular people group and it is that I'm reaching out to today the poor for those who will suffer from the financial crash to come will be the poor And it is they who will come to the Lord, for it is far easier for a poor man to receive Christ than a rich man. For the rich man's securities are in the things of this world, but once those securities are taken away, and believe me, it will be the poor who will pay the brunt of all this. But it will be they having had that which they have held dear taken away from them, it is they who will be looking for answers. And as the real church gets moving in intercession, so we will re-witness the revival we've all been longing for. So it's important to grasp the various parts of this passage and what the no condemnation means. It is a constant walking in which there is a constant conflict. between the passions of the flesh and the walk in the spirit. Catherine Coleman declared each day she died a million deaths. And I could believe it to perform the way she did on stage as a beautiful lady, dressed beautifully, which is only right. Performing signs, wonders and miracles after preaching God's word. One has to say, we can learn a lot from Catherine Coleman. She suffered greatly in life, but gave her life to the Lord and chose to die, as she put it, the million deaths a day. This being, of course, an expression. The religious, oh, how can you die a million deaths? Look, it's an expression. And I can only express to you the words of Paul when he said, the Lord of the spirits of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. In other words, he had reached a point in his spiritual life, he was free from sickness and disease. And this is our walk today. You see, when we start pondering Scripture, doesn't the Bible say to meditate on the Word day and night? When we start pondering, meditating, grasping, understanding, 
the context of Scripture, to whom it was originally written, to understand the context in which it was written. Lindsay's New Testament survey course will help you with all of that. But it is this dying to flesh we need to understand. It has nothing to do with a man-made form of holiness. It has nothing to do with the outward appearance. It has nothing to do with hat wearing. It has nothing to do with outward signs. For if we are to come to the spiritual warfare being required, which God is calling us to in this great revival, which is to come before the great tribulation, just at the point of the rapture, we need to grasp that we ourselves are not to live. Now, this is not me calling anyone to suicide as has been mistakenly understood in the past. When Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, he speaks spiritually. Jesus going to the cross, body, soul and spirit, to rise up body, soul and spirit, having made an open show of the devil and all his cohorts, we learn to understand that we, the body of Christ, are literally that. And that to become that, we become the empty vessel for God to fill. That the earthly lusts and the earthly part of us has learned to die just as Catherine Coleman so adequately intimated you see we're in our part one what does it mean to walk not after the flesh what does it mean to walk after the spirit what does it mean to have no cares and lusts for this world what does it mean to totally rely on God? I'll tell you what it means. It means the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made us free from the law of sin and death because our adequacy is in the Lord and not of ourselves. And that is what is featured in verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. How many have tried to keep just the Ten Commandments, never mind all the rules and regulations of modern life. Yesterday I hired a car for Arnold Clark of Air in Scotland. It would have been easier to break into Fort Knox with all the regulations and forms and signatures and online links to DVLA and special codes coming from here. It's like breaking through a great barrier to be able to simply hire a car. In the old days before the pandemic, simply show your driving license. But today, something different. Rule after rule, regulation after regulation. When the world starts to learn to keep to God's ten rules, then we'll be a whole darn sight better. But until then, we're going to have to understand the letter of the law killing. You see, it has nothing to do with your own self-righteousness and ability and inability to keep any law and regulation. It's got everything to do with moving of the Spirit and being of the righteousness of Christ, not of our own selves for what the law could not do, says the Scripture, in that it was weak through the flesh. I get it from people locally here in Witton. 
Oh, no, you, you, you've got to keep to the law. Nobody ever has done. Because we're weak in the flesh. A nation of peace with itself is a nation of peace with God. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You see, it's not with our ability. It's with his. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For thinking with the natural mind, thinking that one can become righteous through one's own ability, will lead to death because you'll never keep up with it. Thomas Akempis wrote a book, The Imitation of Christ, calling believers to imitate Christ and be like him. Forget it, it will never happen. For this state of affairs only comes through your death your inability. As Catherine Coleman, I die a million deaths so that when we die, I speak spiritually. I already had one call in the night from a doctor saying, are you all right? Not from a doctor, from a policeman. The doctor came later. I've been preaching this online My brother, when he was alive, seemed to have called the police in case I was about to commit suicide. So I'm emphasizing over and over again, I talk spiritually. You see, those of the natural mind have great difficulty. Often people with a great intellect have great difficulty in handing it all over to the Lord. You see, they think with natural perspective rather than that of the Spirit. Are you all right, the policeman? I've just woken up. I went to the front door. There the policeman stood asking me if I was all right. I said, you better come in. And I've been reported for being about to commit suicide. I said, well, wasn't thinking of it. You see, people look to work out what's being said by the anointed with their natural minds. You see, how can I preach on walking in the Spirit by appealing to your natural mind. You see, I'm looking to stir up the gift of God which is within you, your spirit. For if ye live after the flesh, the word declares, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So we've dealt with the two parts. Step one, no condemnation. Step two, being dead. And step three, being a son of God. Behold, declares 1 John 3, what manner of of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. The police then reported me to my local doctor, a Dr. Shaker, when we were living in North Wales 
of the Penryn Bay surgery. He called me in. I said, what's going on? He said, the police have asked me to see you. I said, what is it about? He said, are you doing any harm to yourself? I said, Dr. Shaker, you look at my medical record. Check in all of its pages. Has there been ever one page of self-harm? No, he says. We know you, David. We know, David, you would not do such a thing. I said, Dr. Shaker, do you have a faith? He said, yes, I am a Hindu. I said to him, do you understand about dying spiritually? Yes, he said. He said, David, we understand you would not do such a thing physically. Words to that effect. A Hindu understood. <coughs> you see the problem with Great Britain, and it included my brother, who's now passed away, is that the nation thinks with its natural mind. It calculates and cannot grasp the word of Almighty God. For to understand this word requires a revelation, requires the no condemnation, requires to being dead to the natural self, requires an openness of the spirit. Whosoever, 1 John 3, 9, is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he is born again. Yet the local church here in Witton preaches the false doctrine of sinner saved by grace. It is a culture, a humanly worked out doctrine that has no base in the word of God, is based on what is seen by the optic nerve, is based by the outward appearance, which the Bible says to take no notice of, but rather be of the word of God, which brings life. There was an old hymn, sing them, over again to me, wonderful words of life. Those words of life come not through natural knowledge. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. You know, beloved, the scripture tells us we are the sons of God. And if we are a son of God, how can sin abide in us? And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. So we have step one in Romans 8. The no condemnation. The step two, being dead. The step three, understanding who we are. Says the scripture, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, but ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the closest relationship one could ever have. 
The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. You see, it's not by natural sight. It's by the witness of the Spirit, by revelation. You know, I need all night to go through the final part, the intercession. I've just covered the first three parts. The intercession will come another week. So you're going to have to come back to hear the final installment. Step one, the no condemnation. Step two, the being dead. The step three, now we are the sons of God. The people the whole world is waiting for and are now about to manifest themselves right in the heat of the build-up to the great tribulation to bring about the greatest revival the world has ever seen. Lindsay is coming to sing Give Thanks with a grateful heart in our hymn sing. Join in, dead as the deer panteth for the water. Oh, Father, we praise you. We give you glory for this, your message today. Amen. Our three points from the beginning of Romans 8. Father, we're going to have a time of intercession in the future so great. And you, the Spirit has told me to have a special program about it. And we will teach intercession like you've never known before. The ultimate intercession. The being Him before the Father. But our three points today. One, the no condemnation. Two, the being dead. Three, knowing who we are as led by the Spirit of God. The sons of God. Lindsay! Thank you, dear. What excitement to live in these times. Just about time for the revelation of the sons of God in the shadows of the tribulation. This is not easy times to live in, but yet, if it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me, then... All things are possible. We have total victory over these things. Being led by the Spirit, the sons of God. So let's give thanks for this. And above all, for God giving his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ.
And as the deer panteth for the water, wonderful psalm this is based on. So my soul longeth after thee. In a dry and thirsty land. It's the most appropriate, it's beautiful song for these days. These days. Dear panted the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Here alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. very last of the last days and as we come before you now in the name of Jesus we're thanking God for the miracle that the offerings have come in to almost cover the costs of the funeral of our dear brother Brian at Emmanuel Church Oswald Twistle Lancashire this coming Tuesday at 2 o'clock a few weeks ago we were basically skipped we knew there was 2,000 pounds approximately left but needed another three now just about 500 short which is a miracle Especially in these days. Yes, especially in these days. And all those of you who have given financially, we give Jesus the praise Thank you. that you've listened unto him. And also for those we mention in the countries in Africa, the countries in Asia, where they've not been able to give financially, but have been able to give of their prayers petition prayers and intercessions we'd like to thank God for you as well but that is just as important and to have this breakthrough has been a miracle and we give Jesus the praise for it and all the glory and as we look to cover the costs of running this ministry the holiness as well as Pentecostal message we give Jesus the praise and all the glory for your tithes and offerings. 
The day is so important. If ye be Christ, are ye Abraham's seed. And Abraham gave of his tithe to the table of Melchizedek. Genesis 14, which contained three elements. From our side, being of the tribe of Abraham, the tithe. On God's side, the symbols of the body of Jesus Christ and his precious blood. You see, God is a covenant God. And as we give of our tithe, the benefits of the table come flooding over us. That we're able to overcome. We invite you to this table now to give of your tithe. And Lord Jesus, we praise you and give you glory. Just hold on a minute. I'm just going to change the picture. Thank you, Lord. So you can see us the both. The glory of body. your presence. We, your temple, give your reverence. Hallelujah. There you are. You can see me better now. And as we walk in the Spirit, we stand fast on the promises of God. We stand fast in the glory of God. We stand fast in the dominion of God that whatsoever we shall bind on earth is bound in the heavenly realm. Whatsoever we shall loose on earth is loosed in the heavenly realm. And as we make this stand before you today in the name of Jesus, having built a spiritual ark in Whithorn, Scotland, as all around us starts coming to north, the hymn writers declared the solid rock on which I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Jesus told the story of the wise man and the foolish man. Where is your house today? For all your world reliances are being taken away, but those who stand on the rock in trust in Jesus Christ, as the storm comes as it will in October, even though a thousand will fall at one side, ten thousand the other, the promise of the Lord to those who are faithful to Him, who give their lives to Him, it shall not come nigh thee. And as we come to 91 Psalm this October, let this be our one and only security zone it's really important it will happen of it will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace you know one survey says 49% of the population will not be able to heat their houses this week. But if you turn your eyes upon Jesus, then His fires will not only be sufficient for your physical needs, but more important, that you be of the Spirit of God. So thank you for joining us for this uh, Pentecostal Holiness Church. From Lindsay and I, God bless you. Oh Lord, we praise you. We give you glory. In this our uh, builder to the great tribulation not that his body will go through it. 
but that as we approach the rapture, the greatest revival of all time. Oh, let it come, Lord, we pray. In your mighty name, God bless you. Bye for now. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. God bless you and thank you. These things are happening soon. But he is our refuge and our strength. God alone. Bye-bye. God bless you. See you soon.